today I saw my family down here. Clear as day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now, too? Hmm. Boyong, do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously... <sighs> of course I want to go home. I must have... family too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters? Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? I'm... Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Alatus. Is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's calling again. <coughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look, there's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... I remember now. I know you. <laughs> Brothers and sisters have come for me, Boy Young. You're, you're awake. At least, at least tell me your name. Brother, Brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. <laughs> Bosatius. I, I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make. The ultimate sacrifice! So much today. But I don't need to hold back as much when I talk to you. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like you were aware of your destiny? The potential of life? The approach of death? Whatever it might have been. By now... I have accepted that destiny is the one disaster that the Yaksha know most keenly of all. We are destined to misery. And yet, we have no fear. Xiao... It matters not. Rex Lapis had said that you are a witness. It is right that the events of the world are relayed to you. Bonanis, Minogius, and Indarius all perished. And only Bosatius's fate was unknown. This has always stung my heart like a thorn. That is why I went to the chasm, despite being fully aware of the danger. Now that I know what happened in the chasm back then, I can finally put this matter to rest. Before we left that place, I picked up a stone. I thought if I could take it out with me, I would place it in the temple to Pervases in memory of Bosatius. Unfortunately, the stone did not survive. Pervases died in the Archon War thousands of years ago. He was younger than us. And Bosatius was very sad when he passed. Too many Yakshas have become casualties of battle. We are like a flock of birds, scattered to the four corners of the world. And in the end, as Bonanis said, it's rare for a Yaksha to find repose for their soul. Bosatius, Boyang... And all those soldiers. Heroes. I like that word. Maybe the world will never be free of disaster. But there is good in the world, too. Even the darkest hearts have room for those they cherish. I accept your advice. From this day on, heroes will always look out for each other. I see everything. 
Rico. Everyone hold hands. What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is.
into destiny.
Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I brought someone with me. <laughs> Mr. Alhatham, I'm aware of where you stand, but how can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Huh? What do you mean? We need to clarify our stance or something? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Go on. Earn her trust. Is it really that simple? Uh, may I call you Traveler? Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of King Deshret can truly change Sumeru for the better? Why is that? That's very similar to what Miss Candace says. I know you two are friends. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Before, I wouldn't even have the courage to ask something like this. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? another nation so it isn't wrong of you to be weary and we aren't really residents of any one nation but even so we've met lots of people from different places and we've always fought for what we believed in we have friends in sumeru and we want to help them that's why we decided to stay here for a while I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. To be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. Oh, he then told us you have your reasons. It's okay. We understand. The fact is that I'm... Only one side of my family is desert folk. I don't really fit in anywhere in Sumeru. Some believe in the Dendro Archon, while others believe in King Deshred. I don't belong to either side, and neither side would want me. Speaking of which, the Radicals mentioned that they despise traitors. Do they just think that anyone who's different from them is a traitor? Yeah. Some people can be so narrow-minded when it comes to bloodline and beliefs. It makes no difference what I say or how I behave. I'll always be suspected of having ulterior motives. Slowly, I just stopped talking to people. I pretended not to hear or see anything. All I want is to live my life in peace. And then it happened. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. I'm sure he'll keep your secret. All right. I'll tell you what I told Al Haytham. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes, I hear strange crying sounds in the night. <gasps> there are ghosts? Perhaps. I'm not sure. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance, and always carries very raw emotion. It used to be louder and more frequent, but ever since you arrived in the village, it doesn't seem to happen as often, and when it does, it's much quieter. I have to focus really hard to make it out. I confirmed this with the guards on night duty. They also have someone with a good ear, and he's heard similar sounds at night. But... Because we're in the middle of a desert, he would rather believe that they are the cries of beasts than ghosts. There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years.
serious. We gotta stay on our A-game, too. Hmm. This is the one. Let's go in and take a look. <sighs> hey, I hate them. Patience. Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. Until then. I'm taking a break. Just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? What are you reading? Let's hide and see! Okay, sure. Hmm... Huh? Uh... Um... The natural position. Which is the pos- So... Um... You got that? Oh, Paimon gives up. You keep reading your book. See ya. How is he so relaxed? Look him. Reading an impossible book in a creepy place like this. Hey, Paimon's your Tibet travel guide. Paimon knows plenty of useful stuff already. And anyway, it's not Paimon's fault that the books people read in Tamero are so complicated. So sleepy. Huh? What was that sound? There it is. It's coming from that direction. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Hmm? It's from below. There's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. As I thought, there's a hidden structure. Oh, it looks like there are other mechanisms around here. Let's keep exploring.
that time. This place hurt a little. Hey! Speed of light. I see everything. With sword comes shadow. someone over there good idea let's approach him slowly without alarming him wait you're anyone's grandfather. Also, why is he the only one here? Didn't expect to see him here. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded with people? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. <sighs> the symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Huh? Why do you say that? Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? <laughs> Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. It isn't difficult to deduce their rationale. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of King Deshret's resurrection, 
emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru village. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru village leapt into action. Unbeknownst to them, of course, through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the academia. As well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends, this scheme has one further advantage to the academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto King Deshret's followers. Life for the desert dwellers has been brutal ever since King Deshret's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of King Deshret and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory, too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Why does it want them back now? Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars' identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. After that, they were exiles. And finally, they become missing persons. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. That makes missing people an ideal resource. Resource? For what exactly? One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Extracted? You mean, Dan's knowledge comes from people's brains? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night when no one is watching them. So, the human brain... Nope! Nah! Paimon doesn't want to think about this! I'm the Academia Scribe, after all. I'm familiar with their projects. Anyway, judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind. But something went wrong in the process. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him, and he used such a capsule for himself. But Paimon's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Extracting can knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder. What do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? The Academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge, but what is their ultimate goal? I've spent quite some time trying to analyze the contents of the Divine Knowledge Capsule, but to no avail. It seems like my way of thinking is too different from theirs. You mean, you're not even slightly interested in getting your hands on this forbidden stuff? 
All scholars seek to expand the horizons of knowledge, but I'm not particularly interested in gods, so I don't share their degree of zealotry. Extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects? <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress, then the academia may as well shut its doors. It sounds like you're really against all this. Of course. The academia's actions run contrary to their rules. Whether it be academics or knowledge, everything has its boundaries. If those lines are crossed, the rules and order that govern everything in the world will be destroyed. This matter needs to be corrected, just like fixing a typo in a book. Wait, didn't you step in to help because you felt sympathy for those poor people? Not to be callous, but no. My criteria are a little more restrictive than that. There is no shortage of suffering in Sumeru, and the same can be said for the rest of Tibet as well. What do you plan to do about that? Save every last person? Um, probably not. Uh, Paimon's not sure. You can say that. Simply put, I don't blindly place my faith into strength or heroism. I do what I want. The Divine Knowledge Capsule is something I want to investigate in full. That doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. Paimon's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> you're probably right. Though I must say, I quite enjoy this feeling of being the odd one out. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? Wow, that's a great way to think about it. Paimon's really impressed. If only Miss Shani had a similar mindset, her life would definitely be a lot easier. I'm just a more likable person than her in general. There's nothing more to it than that. <sighs> He won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru Village. Ready, steady, go!
Everything. 